week or two, three weeks usually we have like um, training, a three week experience to try and get the concepts across. And the goal is to get with my, I got it. Got it. Yeah. All right. Admit all. I did it. Okay, I'm here and I'm unmuted. <laughs> Hi, Barb. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, for the award ceremony. We know you're super tired and we are too. So we will make this as quick as possible for you. And thank you for joining us. Um, right now, we are going, I'm going to introduce um, Barb Robinson and Tom Gabriel, who you all probably know at this point. Um, Tom is going to read our next slide. Um, and we're going to um, give honor for a moment. So if we could move to slide one, please. And over to you, Tom. Okay, thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Our land acknowledgement. We pay respect to the Anishinaabeg Algonquin people who are the traditional guardians of this land. We acknowledge their longstanding relationship with this territory, which remains unceded. We pay respect to all indigenous people of this region and from all nations across Canada who call this land home. We acknowledge the traditional knowledge keepers, both young and old, and we honor our courageous leaders past, present, and future. Thank you, Tom. We're gonna to go to the next slide and Barb Robinson. Barb. We may have lost Barb again. Her internet's a little bit uh, difficult. I think she's on her way back in. Um, but Tom, if you want to go ahead. And, and okay. Moment of silence. Glad to wear a nice shirt today. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> moment of silence and remembrance. As many, if all of you are aware of several mass graves and unmarked grave sites containing the remains of indigenous children have been discovered at residential school sites across Canada. At this time, we ask that you take a moment to reflect on and acknowledge the atrocities that were inflicted on the Indigenous community as part of Canada's colonial regime. Canada is often viewed as a country which protects and upholds the human rights and dignity of all. However, to this day, Indigenous communities are feeling the devastating effects of colonialism. For example, many remote communities remain on boiled water advisories and traditional hunting and fishing rights are currently under threat. Our thoughts are with the children, their families, and the indigenous community at large as they attempt to heal from these unspeakable acts against them. Thank you, Tom. Great. So we can go to the next slide. So due to the COVID-19 pandemic, CACCF did not hold any awards or large annual meetings in 2020, virtual or otherwise. So thank you for joining us to honor the CACCF award winners from both 2020 and 2021. And we can go to the next slide. So the Rolly Gatton Award is an award that recognizes an individual who has provided outstanding service and commitment as a director of the board of the CACCF. This individual approaches their work with dedication and passion, moving the profession forward with their efforts. You can go to the next slide. I am thrilled to announce uh, that the 2020 Rolly Gatton Award winner is Jan dinsmore Chakowski. Jan has been an absolutely imperative part of our board of directors previously and continues now to work with our ethics committees helping us make sure that we maintain the highest level possible. Um, instead of reading this entire thing, I'm gonna summarize it for you and tell you that Jan has contributed more uh, knowledge and hours uh, in the ethics uh, for CACCF than I've experienced before. And her insight, her knowledge, and her dedication to making sure that everything goes exactly as it should is something that we will never um, be able to celebrate quite enough. You know, she's been doing this for a lot of years and she's made an incredible impact on the communities. And we are thrilled to, uh, to give her this award. 
And Jan, I'm not sure if you're here because I didn't call you and tell you to be here, uh, but I did send you a message. <laughs> so hopefully you're here, but congratulations. We are so grateful to you. Uh, and we look forward to the day that you return to our board. So uh, next slide. So a few years back, there was this guy named James Bowen. And he was kind of just trucking along on our board and he was doing his thing. And uh, a whole bunch of stuff happened. <laughs> and next thing we knew, James Bowen was the president of CACCF. And over the last, I guess, I don't know how many years now, three maybe, um, James has become our backbone, uh, my foundation, and the guiding light, uh, which brought us to be able to do everything that we do today. We do what we do because James was behind us. Uh, James turned out last year um, in our most recent uh, meeting, and he is now in school. He is uh, continuing to work very hard with our First Nations communities across the north. Um, his example that he sets in every single thing that he does makes me proud to know him and proud to be a part of this organization. And because of James, we are where we are today. Um, and there's not words really to talk about what an amazing, incredible characterized man we have um, who led us through some very tumultuous times. So James, I know that you're here because I seen you pop in. Thank you uh, for everything that you've done for CACCF that you will probably do in the future and for the hard work that you are doing in the North to make sure that you support everyone. Um, we appreciate you and there aren't actually words that I can give um, to honor you in the name of Rolly Gatton is, um, is an honor for us to be able to do. Thank you for guiding us and, and holding our hands uh, through the tough times. So hope you like the picture we chose and uh, we are so grateful to you for everything. Um, so next slide. <clears throat> Barb, this one is over to you. Thank you. This, this uh, gives me great pleasure to uh, present this award. This award is presented to an individual or team of individuals that have created a direct positive impact on Indigenous addictions recovery community. These individuals consistently demonstrate extraordinary commitment to serving their community and their public sphere. It, I get a little emotional, the team, I think we go to the page, Everything that we do in the Indigenous community is all for one and one for all. And so it's very difficult sometimes to pick um, somebody to, to receive this award because it's a reflection of the community. And so this year, the award is going to act to a team. If we flip the page here, can I do that? This year, it's going to a team that I've, I've had the, the honor the humbleness to work with, and it was very pleased in the selection of, the, of this team. These are a team of 20 individuals who work in the far north in northern Saskatchewan, the Peter Ballantyne Cree Nation. They are frontline workers in addictions and mental health, and they're integrated. So an addictions worker ends up doing suicide intervention, they end up doing some trauma work, they end up taking kids to treatment, they end up doing, they've been doing uh, tracking for COVID. They are, they do an amazing job, whatever they're asked to do. Also, the um, they do their job by skidoo. They do their by car, truck, train, and do a very good job. They're very committed. There's eight communities that they work with, uh, both with mental health and addictions. They work with the Brighter Futures Program. Uh, building healthy communities, youth prevention, uh, suicide prevention, Indian residential school programming, a day school, missing and murdered women and girls program, a land-based treatment program for detoxing, mental health counseling, and mental health wellness. Mental health and addictions team addresses the psychosocial needs of the community through ass assessments, prevention, intervention, aftercare, and community mobilization and development. Not only is the work of the PBCN, Peter Ballantyne Cree Nation, holistic health department complex and multifaceted, but it's done under extremely difficult conditions. They are able to provide excellent recovery support under remote conditions with transportation is challenging. 
This makes the work they do all the more deserving for the recognition for this reason. They are receiving both the 20 and 2021 award. And this is the team. Do you want me to go through them, um, Crystal? Yep. Okay. Uh, Cecile Morasti is the program manager. So she's uh, she uh, does the oversight and does budgeting and makes sure that the team has what they need in order to, to travel for their um, resources, you know, whether it's food for their land-based treatment, she's, she manages and sees, the whole, it's a big job for managing eight communities. These are the team leads, uh, Bernadette Hillier, Phyllis Custer, um, Margaret Dumay, and I work closely with many of them because they took the uh, mental health and addictions training and they were some of the first students uh, post-secondary that worked with me with the model, the healing vision model. Jonathan Valentine, Madonna Valentine, Shlana Cook, and Bella Beatty are all not only addictions workers, but they're primary intervention workers. So you can see it, how complex this is. It's not just addictions. I'm trying to go forward here, okay. Alton Michelle, uh, Larry Beatty, and Derek Custer are also addictions workers and uh, prevention or intervention facilitators. Youth workers, they got a lot of, of on their plates as well. Charmaine Valentine, Marcus Linklater, Arnold Dorian, Lehman Okemiu are all working primarily with youth, but they integrate back and forth. If their adult is on holidays, then one of the youth workers will cover. residential support and you can imagine we got eight communities a large big band um, the Sturgeon Landing residential school was located on uh, the P uh, Peter Ballantyne um, pro um, reservation and we've only got two support people um, to work with the fallout and it's not just a recent fallout this has been ongoing it's just got to the forefront uh, just in particularly finding the graves of the children in Northern BC and our 715 in Saskatchewan with thousands more to be found. Oh, I think went too far. So congratulations to the uh, holistic team for the Peter Valentine Cree Nation. And I'll look forward to meeting them all in person later on in the fall to celebrate. Thank you, Barb. Thank you. And congratulations to the Peter Ballantyne team. Well deserved. Um, so this is going to be a little emotional for me now. Um, so this is the Jeff Wilby Award for both 20 and 2021. There will be two recipients. Um, this award is presented to individuals who consistently demonstrate exemplary service to their community and to the profession at large. These individuals have found great success in the industry and have earned the respect and admiration of their peers in the addictions field. And we are lucky enough to have a message from Jeff's wife, Diane, um, that we'll be able to play for you. As most of you know, we lost Jeff a couple of years ago, um, but he is at the forefront of what we do as we do it. Um, and so Jennifer is going to play the video for you. Just bear with us because we obviously have a technical glitch here for a second. Hello everyone, I am Diane Welby. I would like to thank Tom and Crystal for their invitation to speak briefly about my late husband, Jeff Welby's career in the addictions field. And so I will give you the condensed version. Jeff has attended this conference, and I would like to think he is here in spirit today. Jeff's skill and knowledge in the addictions field spanned approximately 40 years, including throughout the evolution of CACCF, where he became executive director. A dedicated advocate for CACCF and the broader addictions field, Jeff was instrumental in bringing Recovery Awareness Month to Canada and played a key role in the evolution of the Silver Ribbon Campaign. During Jeff's time with ICNRC, 
first as the CACCF Canadian board representative, and then as president, he became aware of the United States moving towards licensure of addiction practitioners, and he felt Canada needed to move in a similar direction. He used to say, why is it that my auto mechanic must be licensed, but my addiction counselor does not? Throughout his career, Jeff was a prolific writer, accomplished international speaker, leader, mentor, collaborator, strategic planner, and a visionary. Everything he did was with the intent to be of service. He was a pioneer, not being afraid to go into uncharted territory. At the local and federal government levels, he lobbied for regulation of the addictions profession, promoting the importance of quality standards and public accountability through a regulatory body. Jeff used to say he was just a dumb old country boy. I can assure you there was nothing dumb about Jeff Wilby. With determination and integrity, he forged on, holding true to his goals and principles, knowing the importance of regulation for those caught in the web of addictions and for those serving these clients. And in this, I believe he inspired others working in the addictions field. A powerful advocate on many levels, including on the various boards he so aptly chaired, whether on a personal level as chair of two district health councils or on a professional level in the workplace. I am told he skillfully guided the Federation's boards of directors where his influence continues to this day. The political wheels of progress can turn slowly and sadly, Jeff's goal of seeing the addictions profession regulated Canada-wide was interrupted by his failing health. I trust others are carrying the torch. I would be remiss if I did not extend my congratulations to this year's recipient of the Jeff Wilby Award and to express my gratitude to the CACCF Board for continuing to acknowledge excellence in the addictions field in Jeff's name. In conclusion, I wish you continued success at the conference and in your careers. I hope you will agree that Jeff was a powerful asset within the addictions field. As Jeff would have said, Godspeed, keep smiling, and let's meet over a bowl of soup. Thank you. Sorry, we're just flipping back to our PowerPoint, folks. Just for one second. Sorry, I just didn't want you to echo. I'll give you a second. Yeah. There we go. All right, next slide, please. After this. It, after this one. So yeah. There we go. All right, so we all know Rick Cernick. I had to ask Rick how to say his last name today um, because I've said it, I've heard it said so many times. Um, but what thing, one thing about Rick that we know is that his impact on addictions and on training, teaching, participating, working, moving, flowing um, has been lifelong has been instrumental and has been something that is almost uh, incomparable. So, you know, I'm gonna read Rick's bio a little bit. Um, I'll tell you one thing, when we were looking for a photo of Rick, we could only find photos of Rick playing baseball. <laughs> and so um, we learned something new about Rick every time we talk to him. Um, he's earned multiple degrees, including a, a Bachelor of Science in Psychology, an MSW, a PhD in Social Work, 
Rick holds the designations of Canadian Certified Addiction Counselor and Registered Social Worker. Rick's a professional at the School of Social Work, King's University College at Western University. Rick has written and edited 14 books, and I'm pretty sure almost everyone here has all of them, and authored more than 200 peer-reviewed articles and book chapters. Some of Rick's publications are just saying now, no, A Counselor's Guide to Psychoactive Drugs, Homeless, Housing and Mental Health, Substance Use and Abuse, Everything Matters, and Responding to the Oppression of Addiction. Rick has presented at over 200 national and international conferences, workshops, and seminars. He's put in a part of research teams that have received over $3.4 million in funding. Rick has been on the King's University College Honor Roll of teaching 16 times consecutively. Rick was the co-developer of the McMaster University Addiction Studies Program where he has taught for 30 years, was, inaugural, was the inaugural, inaugural recipient of the McMaster University Instructor Appreciation Award. Rick has led curriculum reviews of both the undergraduate and graduate programs at the King's University College School of Social Work. Rick was also teaches in the Addiction Studies Program at Wilfrid Laurier University. He's provided supervisory services to consultants in Boston and a variety of other places. Rick Cernick is exactly what this award was made for. Um, and we are honored uh, to be able to give him this award. We are honored to give him this award in Jeff's name um, and that he continues to do the fine work uh, that Jeff set out to do. So Rick, I know that you're here and uh, you can feel free to unmute yourself um, and take a moment um, if you'd like to let everyone know who you are and, and say hello. Thank you so much, Crystal. I just put a little note in the, uh, the chat. Um, I consider Jeff a friend of mine. And so I, I put in the note as I am um, humbled and honored um, to receive this award. Um, as an educator, you're only as good as the students who want to learn from you. So um, I appreciate everyone that's here at the conference. Appreciate the fact that everyone's here so they can serve the communities better. Um, thank you so much for this. I, I didn't expect it. And I am um, honored to receive it in Jeff's name. Thank you, Rick. Yeah, we're all silently clapping in the background. <laughs> um, and our final award of the night, so that all of you can go and listen to Rick's good advice to shut off your devices, go into a dark room and let your brain rest so you can sleep. Don't drink coffee tonight. Um, if I can have the next screen, please. So in thinking about the 2021 award, um, I thought back to where, where have we gone in the last year? What's happened in the last year? Um, who's been instrumental in creating change in the last year? If Jeff were here right now, who would Jeff tell us to give this award to? And it took me maybe five minutes to come up with the name Sean Rumble. Sean has and remains one of the most hardworking, dedicated, nonstop believer in change revolution for people suffering with this disease that he has not stopped. He is hope. Sean is what all of us strive to be. And that is an example to this world of how to give everything you are to make sure that everyone is okay. And I have never come across an individual with such fire in his soul as Sean Rumble. It was no question that Jeff Wilby would have told me to give this award to Sean Rumble. If you don't know Sean, you need to know Sean. Um, he's been working in the field of mental health and addictions for close to 20 years. And over the last 10 years, he has accrued numerous addiction recovery qualifications and designations. Sean has our Canadian Certified Telemedicine Addiction Counseling Professional Certification. He has the Problem Gambling Counselor Certification. He's a Canadian Certified Addiction Counselor and Intimacy Anorexia Therapist and uh, Partners Recovery Therapist, a Sexual Recovery Therapist, and a Clinical Supervisor. Um, Sean's enjoyed a number of successes throughout his career, including media spots, program development, training, supervision, conference speaking, journal publication, and being recognized as a leader in the field of addictions. Sean is currently the executive director of the Canadian Problem Gambling Certification Board, 
And in describing his work to others, Sean uses terms such as coach, cheerleader, and recovery tour guide. And although he has been referred to by a few different monikers, including stigma slayer, hope dealer, which is my favorite, and scabalist, <laughs> um, he is one like no other. And we are honored that he is someone fighting the same battle that we are. He is indeed a helper to the people. And he exemplifies who Jeff Wilby was and what Jeff Wilby wanted to create. And there is no better person that I can hand this award to right now than the 2021 Jeff Wilby Award winner, Sean Rumble. Sean, I know that you're here and I would hope that you would unmute yourself and introduce yourself. Uh, we are honored to have you as part of our organization and as part of our lives. You are indeed what we all hope to be. And so welcome to the award winner circle and uh, feel free to unmute yourself and introduce yourself. I, I'm uh, completely speechless. Uh, it, you know, I uh, uh, certainly wasn't expecting this. Uh, Jeff is definitely uh, was uh, quite a trailblazer, and uh, to even be uh, associated or affiliated with uh, with his influence and and uh, and memory is uh, is quite an honor. Uh, thank you for the kind words, uh, Crystal. Um, yeah, I, I I strive to to be a, a helper to the people. Uh, you know, I definitely have. Um, my heart's in it, right? Um, person with lived experience, uh, been there, done that, got the t-shirt, lost the t-shirt, sold the t-shirt, <laughs> gave it away. And uh, yeah, so so that this is my, uh, my life's passion is uh, to, to help others in whatever capacity I can. And, uh, and I attend these types of events to, uh, to, to skill up, to level up so that I can be a better helper to, uh, to the, uh, the clients that, that I meet um, on a daily basis and, and a resource to, uh, to emerging uh, counselors. Uh, so I'm looking forward to tomorrow's session. Uh, you kind of gave a good uh, segue. Uh, and hopefully the expectations are not too high, but uh, for anyone who's uh, looking to learn a little bit more about gambling, uh, check out the all-in session tomorrow. And if you're not able to attend, uh, feel free to reach out to me and I'll share with you whatever knowledge I can impart. And, uh, and yeah, thank you again. Uh, wow, <laughs> pretty cool. Pretty cool. Thanks, Sean. All right, everyone. So congratulations to our award winners. You all have earned your keep by far. Um, congratulations to all of you for getting through that very long day. Um, I'm gonna shut my devices off. I want you to shut your devices off because we're gonna see you bright and early in the morning for another long day of learning. So thank you so very much and have everyone the best night you can. Take care.